Today we're going to be discussing the molecular basis of infrared detection by snakes. Very fascinating study that was done. It was published in 2010 by Elena Gracheva et al. First we're going to talk briefly about the difference in snake evolution uh, before we get started into what the study actually was talking about. So ancient snakes is one category used to describe um, snakes such as pythons and boa constrictors. And there's a group called modern snakes, which includes our pit vipers. So pictures A and B are our ancient snakes, so that is both a python and a boa. And then C and D, we have um, our, our pit vipers. So you can see the little arrows pointing down on pictures C and D that point out where the pits are located. Um, in comparison to you see all the, the small little openings on A and B don't exist on C and D, but we do have a specialized pit located between the eye and the nose. So their larger question was, what is the mechanism of stimulus detection of infrared heat in snakes? And likewise, do pit vipers and non-pit snakes use this mechanism in the same way. So again on the right you're going to see the picture of a pit viper with the pit very clearly pointed out. And on the left picture you're going to actually see how the internal structure of that pit um, in the pit viper which is D actually is quite different in development from that of A through C. So the pit vipers have both an outer chamber and an inner chamber, and they have what they call a pit membrane. That's that thicker line that you see going between the outer chamber and inner chamber. Um, so that is a new development in the modern snakes, and we're going to actually be looking at how that works. So their hypothesis was that there was a specialized molecular structure within the pit membrane that serves as a passive antenna for radiant heat, transducing thermal energy, to heat sensitive channels on embedded nerve fibers. So we're going to take a little anatomy lesson here quickly just to look at how a stake's eye, pit, nose, and a few other structures actually work together. First you're going to see the red dot and the red dot actually represents the pit. So as you saw in the pictures where the, all those arrows were pointing to the structure between the eye and the nose, that is the pit um, and the pit membrane um, is what's represented by the red circle. The blue circle is actually represents the eyeball. So the actual um, structure that is taking in visual stimuli and transmitting that information back to the brain. Next you're going to see what we call the trigeminal nerve. And what happens with the trigeminal nerve or what we call the TG um, is that we start seeing branches of that. So that trigeminal ganglion um, is represented by everything that has a V, okay? So we're seeing here that V1 and likewise V2 do innervate into the pit directly. So they're actually taking direct information from the sensory stimuli that the pit is taking in and actually sending that back to the brain. Um, it's very closely related to the eye, as we're going to see later, and how that actually is going to affect their vision. So their methods for test one was that they actually had to identify what would be this molecular structure. So they were able to identify a pit-enriched sensory transducer, which they call TRPA1. So there are several TRP channels, and they found this through transcriptome profiling. And they determined that the orthologue which is uh, one of two, two or more homologous gene sequences found in different species. So that there's an ortholog of the wasabi receptor that exhibits robust heat sensitivity. Now in mammals, the wasabi receptor actually is used to detect chemical irritants or inflammatory agents, not heat. So how do they kind of test how this TPRA1 was going to respond to heat? So what they did was they took um, snake TG neurons and they cultured them um, from euthanized snakes and then the RNA was injected into a Xenopus oocyte. And you see the Xenopus on the left and you see how the oocyte injection occurs on the right. Two to five days post injection they use a two electrode clamp system which is demonstrated in the picture on the right bottom. 
and they measure the current applied to that membrane. So by using the two electrode clamp method, they're testing heat and how does the TPRA1 respond to heat. But we do know that in mammals it also is a chemoreceptor, so it is responding to the chemical response. So in order to rule out that that's what was happening, they did expose them to the AITC. Now this is the pungent agent from wasabi and other mustard plants. And as you can see in the picture, that's basically how mammals um, respond when the TPRA1 is, is activated by that agent, that chemoreceptor. So their findings for test one is that the TPRA1, as expressed in pit vipers, demonstrated a robust and steep response to heat. It was incredibly sensitive. So just with a, a small amount of heat applied, they were able to see that channel turn on. Now the TPRA1 is expressed in non-pit snakes required more heat to generate the same response as they saw in the pit vipers. And so therefore we know that in the non-pit snakes, the TPRA1 is less sensitive to the heat um, than those of the pit vipers. Now, when we're talking about the, the application of the pungent um, AITC, so in order to rule out the chemoreceptor, what they actually found is those TPRA1 channels that were turned on or activated by the heat actually had a much lower response to the AITC test. So they did not turn on with the chemical um, response. But so if we have a high chemical response, we're going to have a low heat response and vice versa. So what we're finding is that this TPRA1 is incredibly plastic and is something that is, as we'll see later, is going to lead to some more interesting work. Now the next thing they did um, is their second test, and this was simply an anatomical investigation of the trigeminal ganglia and the dorsal root ganglia. So they actually looked at different snakes from those di two different classes, the pit vipers and the non-pit snakes, and said, what do they look like? How are they different between them, if any? And what, so they actually looked at those two things. Um, and as we looked in the pictures before, we do know that the pit and the pit membrane in pit vipers is innervated by the transgeminal ganglia. So what they found in this situation is that the TPRA1 is the only differently expressed gene in the TG of pit vipers versus non-pit snakes. So we find, wow, the pit vipers have an excessive TPRA1 in the TG, but they have a significant lack or even an absence of the TPRA1 in the DRA. Wow, so that tells us that TPRA1 is specialized in pit vipers and is specifically used for the infrared heat sensing ability um, as it's innervating the pit and the pit membrane. Now the non-pit snakes, they do show a more even distribution of TPRA1 in both the TG and the DRA. So we know it's going to be used differently simply by the expression um, of it in, in each family. So the TG in pit vipers is also unusually large when you compare it to non-pit snakes, which also indicates an incredibly specialized use and also points to an evolutionary divergence between the ancient and the modern snakes. So what they were able to conclude is that pit vipers have a specialized expression of the TPRA1 gene that we do not see in non-pit snakes. And in pit vipers, the TPRA1 gene has evolved into a heat sensitive channel rather than a chemical or mechanical one. And we also know that the pit vipers, therefore, have evolved improved vision due to the supplementation of the ophthalmic branch of the TG that innervates both the eye, so the visual stimulus, and the pit membrane, the infrared heat stimulus, and it creates an integrated image in their brain. So they have two eyes that are taking a visual stimulus, and for lack of a better way to express it, two more eyes in the sense that those pits are actually sending optical informa or information back to the optical point of the brain and creating a very enhanced image compared to the non-pit snakes. So our big picture conclusions, in addition to the very small picture, pit versus non-pit, is that the TPRA1 channels have a fascinating evolutionary perturbation and selection to function. So they're either a thermo or a chemoreceptor in organisms of very different lineage. 
They're not both. They, that's due to that inverse relationship of being turned on by heat or chemical. And thus, we also find out that the TR, TPRA and other T, RP, TPR channels sorry, provide new genetic and physiological markers with which to delineate evolutionary relationships among the vertebrates and invertebrate species. And here are our works cited. The first one is the actual study, the primary work that we're discussing. And there's some supplementation of my understanding from the second um, article. And then we do some images from Google search. But again, this guy is Vladimir, my boa constrictor that I used to have. A fabulous shot. Um, so you can see all the coolness um, that was Vladimir. Any questions? Be happy to answer them for you. Do you hope you enjoyed the presentation? And we'll see you later.